if you haven't seen this before, this is a used, it's a 2002 Yamaha TTR 125, a little dirt bike, it's not street legal, that, uh, that I got on Craigslist for cheap. It was like 800 bucks. Um, it's burning a lot of oil and it's just kind of been neglected in general. So I'm kind of doing this like uh, tune up type thing where I'm just kind of going over the whole bike, finding things that need, need a little work. I'll, I'll walk you through what I have done though. Uh, so this was a minor thing, but this grip was just falling off. So it was, it was kind of too big. I took some double-sided tape. This is the double-sided tape that I have actually. Uh, I, I stuck a strip of it here, then I sprayed this thing with hairspray and slid the grip on. So that gave it a little bit, uh, the bar a little bit bigger diameter and something sticky. So that's on there great now. Uh, the throttle was okay, but um, the throttle cable is just probably the original throttle cable and never been oiled. So I took this throttle apart and I uh, sprayed some WD-40 down in here and that helped. The throttle is definitely closing a lot better now. Um, I adjusted the clutch. I thought the clutch uh, engagement point was a little far out, so I did that. Um, the I don't know if the brake fluid had ever been changed, so uh, you can, I don't know how well you can see in there. I took the top off of it, it was like black um, here. <laughs> so this is my my old brake fluid, and if you can see how nasty that is, maybe this is like brake fluid from other jobs and some just kind of fresh brake fluid too. So maybe a third of this is what came out of the system, probably closer to a quarter. It was like super nasty. Um, so, I, I just kind of kept pouring fresh brake flu fluid in here and uh, squeezing the lever and pumping it out down there until I had replaced all of it. Um, I did get a little bit of air into the line while I was doing that. And I looked up uh, how to get air out of the line. So first of all, I kind of, I set it like this so that uh, it helps like keep this line more upwards so the air bubbles will travel up. If I go like this, say you have a high point here. And we've had this problem on the WR because look at the WR's um, brake line. This thing is a pain in the butt. Um, we knocked one of these loose on my buddy's WR and we tightened it back up and we tr kept trying to uh, put brake fluid through it and try to get that air bubble out and we could not get it out. It's just really tough uh, with that loop. So we took it into the dealer and they were able to do it for us. But with this one, it's nice. Um, it's not too bad, but I did get a little air in it. And what I did was I grabbed a bungee cord and I saw somebody said, oh, if you just wrap this up real tight so that you're pulling, pulling the lever and then leave it overnight and you come back out, uh, it'll the, the pressure in the line helps get the air bubble up and then, um, and then you just release it and the air bubble comes up into the chamber and then you're good. So all I did was I took, they took like an old piece of an inner tube. All I did was I took this bungee cord and did like one of these. I just wrapped it around a bunch and then hooked it back on there. And I left it like that overnight and it worked great. Uh, I came back out, uh, that was last night. And I came back out this morning and I took this thing off and uh, let the line back out yeah. uh, and it's nice and firm now it's awesome almost too firm <laughs> is that a thing Did that happen Yeah, it's kind of binding. <laughs> okay. So, apparent. I didn't even know that you could uh, do that, but yeah, it built up a little pressure in the brake system. Ooh. But we're good now. 
So what else have I done along the way? Um, I did take, I inspected the front brake calipers and what that was, was you take this bolt out here, which is like a, God, is it a 10 or a 12? I don't know. Um, it's like a 10 or a 12 millimeter. And once you've got that out, these kind of, you can just get the pads out. Um, and there was some pad material left. They're not, they don't look like they're brand new, but I don't know. I'm not trying to get this thing in perfect condition. I'm just kind of trying to make sure that it's decently operable. Uh, so there's some pad material left on the front. And uh, I also took the rear wheel off, opened up the drum and looked at the drums and they're a little glazed, but there's also some pad material on the drum. Um, and I might have over torqued the rear axle when I was putting it back in a little bit because I it, the uh, rear brake was sticking, but I loosened up the rear axle a little bit. Now it's not sticking anymore. So I might look into that a little bit more later. Uh, but for now it's not sticking and that's all I really care about. I am going to be doing a top end rebuild. Uh, I'm replacing the piston rings, getting the cylinder honed. Um, I didn't want to buy a valve compressor yet. Uh, so I'm going to take the head off but I'm not going to take the valves out myself. I'm just going to take it into a uh, to the Yamaha dealer, and they're going to um, replace, take, pop the valves off, replace the valve guide seals, um, and they might make sure that the valves are sealing up correctly uh, as far as the actual valve interface. I'm just kind of doing a once over because, like I said, it's burning a lot of oil. Like. I mean, there's tons of smoke. It's even just throwing some oil out the exhaust. It's like some's going through unburnt. The spark plug is getting oil fouled super fast. Uh, so that's the two. It's a it's an air cooled engine, so it's not like there's um, a whole lot of places where oil can get past. The oil could, is down below the cylinder, below the piston. And uh, so it could be coming past the rings, so I'm gonna replace the rings. And uh, the other place that it could be coming in is the oil goes up into the top of the head. Um, and the head is where like the little camshaft sits because that needs lubrication. And so it could be going through then a uh, bad seal on one of the valves and getting into the cylinder that way. Um, but those are kind of the two main ways that this could be happening, so. Hopefully that'll to totally take care of this thing burning so much oil. Thanks for watching this video. Uh, the next one that I post will be me changing the front tube on this TTR125. Let me know if you guys are enjoying the 125 videos or if you'd like to see some videos of the WR250 or the FC09. Uh, don't forget to like this video if you liked it and Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos.